We are back. We are back. This is Brotivation Sports. I'm your host, Champ Creed. You're listening to Fox Sports 1340 AM. And before the break, we went in depth about what Muhammad Ali meant to, you know, people of a certain generation and his spot in our heroic pantheon, to which, you know, I think I actually might draw out a heroic pantheon. It'll be like, you know, they say, what is your Mount Rushmore of, you know, whether it's basketball, whether it's football, whether it's baseball, whether it's boxing, whether it's hockey. But I think Heroic Pantheon sounds a bit more sophisticated. No more Mount Rushmore of. The Heroic Pantheon. That Yeah, yeah, we're going with that. Heroic Pantheon. So now, like I said, Muhammad Ali Memorial Services, uh, I didn't have any plans to go. Uh, I was watching some archive footage, some archive interviews, uh, throughout the week, a very somber moment, a uh, very celebratory moment throughout the week, Just talking with my friends, uh, family, and, and I have my uncle, my Uncle Tim, who's older than me, of course, because your uncle, it'd be weird if your uncle's younger than you, but that happens sometimes. You know, so he asked me, hey, you know, are you going to go? Are you going to go? He said, I would like to make it. I can't make it. You know, I, I would like to show my respects to the family and, you know, I, I think somebody, you know, should go. And I said, well, you know, I'm thinking about it. I just got to figure it out. I went, look for a flight, you know, because I'm coming from the West Coast um, in Vegas, which is where we're going to be broadcasting from as well. So I'm like, ah, the flight's there now. So I, I pick up uh, pick up some work in Chicago, have an assignment in Chicago, and talk with my manager, uh, talk with a few guys. And uh, shout out to Montel Griffin, who's uh, the – First guy to beat Roy Jones, he actually uh, did my hand wraps for uh, a scene that we shot uh, for a television show. You know, you might see Champ Creed occasionally on television from time to time. And uh, I know Montel Griffin and his family, they were very close with like, Muhammad Ali was practically like his second dad, you know. And uh, I know that he was going. And uh, I reached out, made some phone calls to different people. And then they said, well, listen, you know, if you're in Chicago, you know, we're going to ride down. It's, it's only about a three and a half, four hour drive. I said, oh, really? You know, so I um, said, you know what? I, I, my uncle can't make it. So someone from our family has to be there, you know, to at least pay pay respect, pay homage and, you know, do those type of things that, that you do. So we saddled up and uh, took about a three and three and a half hour drive to, to the T. Could have been quicker, you know, but um, I checked into my hotel and uh, now the actual services for the private services were held on Thursday. The memorial service for everyone was held that Friday and it was at the uh, KFC Yum Center, which <laughs> I don't know why they called it the Yum Center. It's kind of a funny name for these arenas, but naming rights is a big business, you know? And um, they 15,000 tickets were dispersed and 15,000 tickets went really quickly uh, you know, when you have people coming from around the world, those type of tickets, they go to the local folks first. And some of the local people, you know, much to my chagrin, they were trying to sell the tickets. You know, you, you try to make a buck the best way that you can, but there are certain things that you just don't do. And that's on the list of things that you just don't do. I mean, I'm not here to judge and say that, you know, or point my finger hey you're wrong you're going to hell you're doing it no 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 but it's just a matter of class and tact uh like i said muhammad ali gave away so much so if this man meant something to you and you wanted someone else to go then you should have gave away the tickets don't try to sell the tickets I, I i didn't like that that was the only thing that i didn't like about you know the weekend and the days uh surrounding it but moving on to to, to more positive situation so uh I wake up a little late and I'm, you know, I'm bugging out like, oh man, you know, I was on the road, I'm waking up late, I'm gonna miss the motorcade, I'm gonna miss everything. But fortunately, the um, the process in which they were transferring the, uh, the casket to the hearse to prepare for the motorcade, it took them a little bit longer. Um, miss Lonnie, she, you know, had everything mapped out with the local news and, you know, uh, it was written down that, you know, things should be set in a certain way. And she waited till everything was set in a certain way, which fortunately bought myself and my team enough time to be able to get down there, 
Uh, you know, we got to look. Lennox Lewis was there. Will Smith was there. Mike Tyson was there. Mike and Mike Tyson almost didn't make it. Mike Tyson was so emotionally distraught that he came at the last minute. And when I say the last minute, Mike Tyson showed up at the last minute because he didn't know if he would be able to, you know, keep himself composed because he was stricken with so much grief. You know, we talk about life taking away from you more than you could ever gain. You know, here's a guy with Mike Tyson, which we'll probably save for another show. Matter of fact, I might even try to get Mike Tyson on the show. You know, matter of fact, you know what? There is no try. There is due. So we're going to have Mike Tyson on the show at some point in time this summer. Nonetheless, we, we get there and we're ahead of the motorcade. So we kind of like know we, we already had a map of where everything was going to be, how everything was going to go for the timetable. And for um, for production purposes, we were able to set up uh, at the corner of uh, Grand Avenue, uh, where, where Muhammad Ali uh, grew up at his house. And as the uh, helicopters start flying in, you start seeing the people, you know, they ramp up a little bit. And it's, you know, everyone there has a jovial, respectful spirit. And just to give you an idea of where Muhammad Ali grew up, what he came up through, what, what, what he had to fight through, you know, it was a time when he was an eight-year-old boy, nine-year-old boy. This isn't far too far removed from Emmett Till. You know being killed uh this isn't too far from black men being hung from a tree lynchings kentucky parts of it a lot of parts of it clan country you know the socioeconomic structure you know you have your working class you have your middle class you have your upper class and then you had dirt poor now when you pull into louisville you know, you can see there's the downtown central area. There's a little bit of transitioning. Then you can see the place where they're going through gentrification, which is the major thing that's going on through many cities in America. And then you get to the hood. And there was a point in time. Listen, it's 2016. There were kids running outside barefoot, you know. Now, I don't know if they had shoes or not. I don't know if, you know, because sometimes when you're down south, you know, you like to run with no shoes. When I was down south and I lived down south as a kid, I walked around with no shoes, but we had a, you know, farm and we had land and everything. And that's what, I wasn't running in the street on concrete without any shoes, but that's indicative of the socioeconomic stratosphere in which it still grips, you know, it, it, it's still in place. These, these things are, are just social hurdles and barriers that just exist. And this man grew up in this house in a poor part of town, wasn't a great student. You know, I heard from so many people that, you know, academically, he was not the best student, but his charisma and his charm endeared him to the teachers. I learned that Muhammad Ali was actually dyslexic. He had problems with reading, problems with dyslexia. And as he became old, you know, the story goes, someone stole his bike. And he was so frustrated. And he said, whoever stole my bike, I'ma whip him, I'ma whip him. He was mad. And there was a local police officer, saw this, heard the story, and said, I'm gonna teach you how to fight. He got in the gym, fell in love with the sport of boxing. And then throughout the years, as he rose the ranks, you know, he became a lo local celebrity figure. Now, I will say this about the police officers in Louisville. They were the most kind and gracious and respectful police officers that I've encountered, I'd have to say ever, ever. Maybe because of the moment, maybe because of the day, maybe because of the man, they were, they, they did an A1 job in communicating with the community, communicating with the visitors, communicating with the media it was an a1 job and and i have to give a shout out to them because you know that type of police work i wish it could be replicated and duplicated and multiplied with various police departments and i know that it's a tough job to be a police officer but they showed up and they did extremely extremely well so 
you know, learning these things about Muhammad Ali and, and, and learning that, you know, none of the uh, teachers, <laughs> they didn't want to be the teacher that failed the great Cassius Clay, as which his friends referred him to, because they knew he was destined for greatness growing up. And they knew that it would be through, you know, boxing. And, you know, at that time, we're going through the advent of television, you know, um, his charisma with the with the advent of television to be able to trans translate that to that platform and then even with radio and then even in engaging with the sports writers these were things that boxers never really did before uh he took a he took a page out the book of gorgeous george who's one of the top if not the top drawing professional wrestler from the golden era of professional wrestling he said i saw what gorgeous george was doing and that he was pretty and i knew that i was pretty too so i might as well run with this and make it a little bit better and damn it, did it work, you know? So you get to see all these things and hear all these stories and see the, see the children cheering. And, you know, I watched the archive footage, you know, when we were Kings documentaries, the Ali movie with Will Smith. And, you know, Will Smith was there. I'll tell you guys about that after the break. I've only seen people chant Ali, Ali, or Ali, Bumaye, Ali, Bumaye, to be wrapped in a crowd and to have that sound and those words just rain down as the hearse begin to turn the corner as the people anticipated the casket to be driven through the hood and to pay respects by throwing roses and flowers and a showering the grief-stricken family with love from our hearts for the respect of this man with the chant of Ali, Ali. It was one of the most, if not the most, riveting moment that I'd have to say in my personal lifetime. Because it's something that I've seen as a child, it's something that I've seen as a young adult, something that I've seen as a man, but to be in the environment of a person that affected so many people in an inspirational way and have those people cheer have those people yell his name that my friend you cannot put a price on that more about the muhammad ali memorial experience on brotivation sports fox sports radio 1340 a.m 